The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. All right, uh, we're going to talk about hosting. Um, I'm going to go through rules quickly, guidelines just the same as we did before. Then uh, I'm going to re read a, a short section of one of your scripts. You're going to critique my hosting, and then we'll do the same thing for some of you. We, again, we won't talk to, we won't do everyone. Um, this we covered already. Don't read it, tell it. This is what Ira Glass, the Ira Glass video before, from before. Um, <clears throat> this is a subtle point. Uh, you can start off by imitating someone else's hosting style, uh, but you'll invariably just get caught as like that's the only thing that you can do. Uh, and it, it's, since it's not your own personality, it's just sort of weird and unnatural and doesn't work. Uh, I did this when I was first starting out. Um, it did not end well. These are my words of wisdom to you. And no more needs to be said about that. <laughs> um, this is a really hard one. So uh, there's this device called um, the, uh, it's called the like interview something, I don't know. There, um, there's a famous director who basically has a silvered mirror that he puts in front of the camera so that, and there's an image below. It's like a teleprompter, except instead of text, you see a person's face. You see the interviewer's face. So the interviewee is looking straight into the camera lens, but that person is actually seeing the face of the person who's interviewing them. Uh, so who's seen the movie The Fog of War? Yeah, no one else? OK. Uh, you should watch it. It's really interesting. It's, it's basically an, it's a documentary. It's an interview movie. And um, uh, Rich, uh, uh, not, not Richard Nixon, um, the Secretary of War for the Vietnam War was McNamara. Um, so he was interviewed on, on that movie using this technique. And it's a really interesting technique. But the point is, when you look into the camera, we don't have a fancy device like that, unfortunately. But when you look into a camera, see a person's face, preferably someone that you know. Um, whether it's, I don't know, like a friend, husband, wife, son, daughter, whatever it is, pick someone and see their face on camera. Uh, that is the quickest and easiest way to make your hosting more natural without really thinking about it. And that's very hard to do because you're thinking of your script, you're thinking of 18,000 other things, but that's the most important rule. Um, <clears throat> usually, the camera tones you down. So if you are talking like you would normally talk, you will kind of seem like this on camera. It just, it just tones you down and slows you down and lowers your energy level. Unless it's right in your face, then, it, then it's different. But usually, it's not right in your face. So you need to compensate by, I really hesitate to say, like up your energy level because when people say that, the initial reaction is to be like, and then you need to talk like this because that's how, you know, and like that just doesn't work either. So you want to be a more energetic version of your natural self. So think of like, if you were just really excited about something, how would you actually be? That's how you should be on camera. And just to have like physical metrics, higher energy doesn't mean higher pitch and tone. That's like the biggest thing that happens when we say like, now with more energy. Then people talk with a higher tone, like this. And um, that's the last thing you want to do, generally. Yeah. Um, OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this. And you all are going to critique my hosting style. And I'm going to read it as if, I'm going to deliver it, sorry, as if like, oh wait, no, this is a, most of this is a quote. So let me do something else. I'll do this. Um, I'm going to deliver this as though like it's not my job. OK, ready? Here we go. <clears throat> uh, why do some people handle cold better than others? Why is it that some are so fearful of the cold that they rather die than be caught outside with all the winter gear on, mask and all, while others can wear one layer for a morning jog? What makes all the difference? OK, critique. What was wrong with that? Yeah. I felt like you could do more. In so you way? were restrained by the fact that you were looking at somebody else's work. OK, that is true. So if I was, if I was reading something that I, would ha that I have written myself, I'd probably do a better job. But in this case, I, you will be reading your own work, so that won't be quite the same. Yeah? So I think just how you read it, um, it seemed like you're asking a question, but it's not really like 
there's no like, oh yeah, I, I've never thought about it. It's like, why do some people handle cold better than others? But it maybe if you change, like, have you ever wondered why some people and try to, I don't, know, I don't know if it's the structure of the sentence or just how you said it. So there is, and this is part of the exercise, is I'm reading it word for word. So let's assume that I can't change the wording. I mean, in real life you can. But what could I do just with intonation of my voice or what else? Maybe like, like slow down a little bit. And, okay. Um, yeah, and, and really hit that question mark. Okay. You were gonna, oh, you had yeah. your, no, you had your hand up. Uh, I'm gonna think of it. Okay. Um, the tonation, when you ask a question, you probably wanna raise it at the end. And if you were to ask a very important, because there are a couple of questions here. So I guess you can pick the one that you really want them to think mm -hmm. and give them a pause. So get them to think before you actually go on. That's a good point um, that you can, create suspension in your tone and voice, but a lot of people make the mistake of assuming that every question has to end with an uptone, right? A powerful question can be posed with the tone ending down. Why do some people handle cold better than others, right? That is still a strong question, even though I didn't say, why do some people handle the cold better than others, right? Like that actually is- like Well, you didn't end upward on either one of those, right? The ending upward is like, um, why do some people handle cold better than others? Like that's the traditional yeah. way that people ask questions. But but I agree with you. Like the way that I read it, all the questions were flat, all had the same intonation. What I really want to do is vary. So <clears throat> something like, why do some people handle cold better than others? Why is it that some are so fearful of the cold that they'd rather die than be caught outside with all without all the winter gear on, all the mask and all that stuff, where other people can just wear one layer for a morning jog? What's the difference? Right? So each question I asked there in a totally different way. What else? So a big piece of advice that we give to students is to think about the words that you're saying, which is also the hardest thing to do when you're trying to remember everything that you're saying, or you have a camera in front of you. Um, but that's also why we often take the script away from the students, is it's easy to get caught up in, oh, should I have to remember all the words? And I'm very, very guilty of this as well, uh, so I totally understand how hard it is to do. But when you are asking the question generally, why do some people get cold while other people don't? Like, the way I said that was very different than, why do some people handle cold better than others? Right? When I'm actually thinking about the words that I'm saying, which is a very obvious suggestion to make, but again, very hard to um, implement yourself, the intonation and the delivery becomes a lot more natural and genuine. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, that's, that's another rule, like, you know, when you look into the camera, see someone's face, that's something that is something that you can do that doesn't, I mean, it requires some preparation, but it doesn't require thought while you're actually doing it. So <clears throat> when you look in the camera, see someone's face, and um, actually think about the words that you're, that you're saying is helpful, too. You want to avoid monotony not <coughs> just in the intonation. So you don't want to say, why do some people handle cold better than the others? Why is it that some are so fearful? Right, that's monotonous in tone, but it's also monotonous in rhythm, right? So when George said it the second time, he rushed through some of the, the words in the middle that were in a list, which is very natural when we're like, this morning I gotta go to work and I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do this. You rush through things that you list. Whereas um, if you're just reading like you would read, you say it with the same rhythmic pacing. You make the pauses where the punctuation is. You sound very even with the way you break up your words. And that's super unnatural. That's why it sounds robotic, right? So when you mix up not only the intonation, um, but also the speed at which you're delivering some of the words, so I don't know, you can do it again and, and maybe pay attention to how he does it. That's kind of also why it feels a lot more natural. So I'm gonna do it again this time completely different and uh, uh, get your critique as well. Why do some people handle cold better than others? Why is it that some are so fearful of the cold that they would rather die than be caught outside without all the winter gear on, mask and all, while others can wear one layer for a morning jog? What's the difference? Was that better or worse than the first time I did it? Sounds like a TED-Ed video. Sounds like a TED-Ed video? Oh man, then I'm not making very good TED-Ed videos. <laughs> Okay, um, why? What was inauthentic about that? It sounded like too intentionally energized. 
Yeah. So normally when we say to someone like up your energy or when anyone says that, that's what comes out is you get this like weird uh, like I have to really try to be excited about this because I don't really know what I'm reading but I'm going to just emphasize random words and say them louder and that makes it exciting. No, it doesn't make it. You know like that that's and that and especially if you mix that in with like a bit of newscastery, then you're just dead in the water because you, you know you you end up with like the most unwatchable video ever. Um, and you sound like you're trying to talk to a two-year-old too. Yeah, that's, I yeah. Think that's like the final effect, which we want to avoid. Yeah. Um, okay, now I'm going to read it again, and this is going to be a bit more subtle. Here we go. Why do some people handle cold better than others? Why is it that some are so fearful of the cold that they'd rather die than be caught outside without all the winter gear on, mask and all, while others can wear one layer and be fine? What makes the difference? What does that sound like to you? Sounds more natural like you're talking to someone. Definitely sounds more natural. Any critique of it? It sounds a little disinterested at parts. Huh? Why? Like a little bit of a bumble. Like, you know, I talk and I'm finally just, you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, why is it that, da, 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 right? There is, it is very natural, but there is a lack of, like, wonder about that, that this is something, this is a topic that I am sort of taking for granted, you know? And I've, like, I sort of expect that you'll take it for granted, too, so you, you do take it for granted. Um, all right, I've sort of run out of different ways to do that, so uh, let's have you guys try. Uh, who did not have their script analyzed? Come on up. So take my hot seat there. And uh, give us a read. Why do some people handle a cold better than others? Why is it that some are so fearful of the cold that they'd rather die than be caught outside without all the winter gear on, mask and all, while others can wear one layer for a morning jog? What makes all the difference? One more time. Um. Differently. Do it differently. By the way, sorry, uh, those of you that will do production uh, with me and Elizabeth, that is the phrase that you will hear most throughout the week is one more time. <laughs> Go ahead. Why do some people handle the cold better than others? Why is it that some people are so fearful of the cold that they rather die than be caught outside without all the winter gear on, mask and all, while others can wear one layer for a morning jog? What makes all the difference? Do you have the first sentence memorized? Yeah. Deliver it without looking at the script. Why do some people handle the cold better than others? Now look at Elizabeth and just ask her that question. Why do some people handle the cold better than others? Now. Like, don't, don't, um, don't have the line in your head. Just ask her. Why do some people handle the cold better than others? Now Maybe. ask me as if I were Eric Lander. I've never seen him. <laughs> Why do some people handle the cold better than others? Elizabeth, sit closer. Okay. I'm, I'm a professor and you're at my office hours, and I've given you the PSET question uh, relating to hypothermia. Um, why do some people handle the cold better than others? Now, don't, like, ask the question in your own words. Like, don't use the words that are, that are written on the script. Ask Elizabeth. Why are some people so immune to the cold? So do, do people see how hard this is? This is really not easy, right? Thanks, you're good. Come on back. All right, who's next? Your turn. Same paragraph. <laughs> Why do some people handle cold better than others. Why is it that some are so fearful of the cold that they rather die than be caught outside with all the winter gear on, mask and all, while others can wear one layer of a morning jog? What makes all the difference? One more time. 
Why do some people handle the cold better than others? Why is it that some are so fearful of the cold that they'd rather die than be cut outside with all the winter gear on, mask and all, while others can wear one layer for a morning jog? What makes all the difference? Now yeah, do the first line without reading it. Uh, <laughs> I have horrible memory. <laughs> um, you, don't, don't, don't worry about the words. words. You can say it however you want. Uh, <laughs> I guess it just, you know, What's I'm the just, video about? What's the video about? Uh, dealing with the cold weather. Or Same, like, what, who's dealing with it? Okay, I have it. Uh, why are some people better at dealing with cold than others? Okay, you can sit down. So, um, Anyone else want to go? Anyone else want to give it a shot? Yeah, come on up. Same paragraph. Why do some people handle the cold better than others? Why is it that some people are so fearful of the cold that they'd rather die than be caught outside with all the winter gear on, mass and all, while others can wear one layer in the morning job? What makes all the difference? Why do some people handle the cold better than others? Why is it that some are so fearful of the cold that they'd rather die than be caught outside with all the winter gear on, mask and all, while others can wear one layer in the morning job? What makes all the difference? Great, thanks. Um, what time is it? Do we have time? Yeah, we have like a minute. Okay. Uh, what did you guys notice about all of, the, all of those, all three deliveries? Were they different or similar? Both. Their personalities came through. OK. But? It sounds uh, like there was a but. But they had a really hard time doing something different from what they did the first time. I'm not, I, I don't know why this is. I don't have any, like, cognitive theory as to like why it's so hard to do something so differently. Um, to, sorry, why it's hard to, to read when you have the same words in front of you, why it's very difficult to read them in different ways. Um, but it, it, it just, this just happens with everyone. And like, what, especially if you've written the script yourself, you know, you know the words so well, you've looked at it a million times. Um, when it comes time to actually be on camera and perform that script, and we say like, okay, well that was a great, but do it a different way. You're like, well, I wrote it this one way, why should I do it a different way? Maybe that's what your brain is thinking, and so you, you, know, you, don't know how, you just don't know how to do it a different way. Um, let's try something a little weird and creative. Um, what, uh, Yulia, right? Uh, do the first line, but try and do it as different from your first reading as you possibly can. And I mean, if you want to exaggerate, not like, don't think of this as I'm hosting a line. Just think of it as like, I'm going to say these words in the, the, the most different way I can think of. It's okay if it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like, why do some people handle cold better than others? So Valley Girl. OK, good. <laughs> that was very different than your first delivery. Great. Uh, remind me of your name again. Joshua, go ahead, do the first line totally different than the way you did it, and not Valley Girl either. Why do people some... Okay, let me try again. Yeah, yeah. Hey, why do people sometimes handle cold better than others? Okay, that was an accent. So, great, very different. Uh, remind me of your name again? Nathan. Nathan, your turn. Why do some people handle cold better than others? Uh, Yulia, yell the line. Why do some people handle cold better than others? Okay, now close your eyes and just say it. Ask the question. Why do some people handle cold better than others? Okay, that was your best delivery. I don't know why, like sometimes getting people to step way outside their comfort zone and do a line in a totally ridiculous way that you would never actually use 
res resets something in your mental circuitry. I have no explanation for why this works. But like, you get out of your normal, and you, then you just, you just sort of do it the way that you would normally do it if you were talking to someone. Um, that's a technique that we'll also use when, when you, we're in production. We'll be like, OK, you know, actually, we might even say, like, do this line as a valley girl. Do it with an accent. Yell it out loud. Um, you know, do it like a robot. Why do some people handle cold better than others? And then like do it in your normal. Like, why do some people handle cold better than others? I mean, that was different than how I've done it every single time. Um, what other hosting tech? I mean, this is just one of those things that practice. You need to practice, and you should do it. Like I was saying earlier, with an audio recorder, you have them doing vlogs, right? It might be good to change one of those assignments into an audio vlog versus yeah, actually, a... Actually, so for your daily reflection, I know Siri did a video just to make sure that you guys knew, but you don't have to do text reflections. You can do an audio recording if you want. You can do a video vlog if you want. Um, and I think that's a great opportunity to practice some of this stuff. Like, your um, reflection last night it was really good. It was really authentic. Um, you weren't trying to host, but um, I thought you did a pretty good job on camera. And it was very different from your pitch, right? Like, I would suggest that you go back and watch yourself on both your pitch and on your blog last night. And you'll see a, a pretty surprising difference, and it happens to all of us. When you listen to, like, that's the other part of this, is that once you do your you know, vlog reflection or whatever, or audio vlog or whatever, uh, listen to it and see what you sound like. Um, do one where you're just talking off the cuff. You know, you're like, today was great. We had this guy. Was, you know, he was terrible, but he had some good points, whatever, whatever. And then do one where you actually read. You can read even this same paragraph if you want or pick something that you've written and listen to the difference. Um, I think it's only by sort of really listening to yourself that you will learn to do this. Yeah? Have you ever tried to have people do like, kind of like practice dry runs and, you know, maybe tell them that it's not running? Or yes. Like that? Yeah, we do that all the time. It, um, I mean, we'll say, "Oh, this is a rehearsal. We're not rolling, but go ahead and you know, go ahead and deliver the line anyway." Sometimes it works. It usually doesn't because you've still got the camera there. Yeah, it's it's still. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, even though um, we want you to sound as natural as possible, when it comes to the day of shooting, the more you've practiced your lines, it it just takes out one more confounding variable that'll stress you out during the day of shoot that um, the students, you can really tell if they rehearse their lines, even if we end up changing a lot of the wording. They're just much more comfortable because they're not worrying about remembering things. They actually are thinking about the words that they're saying. Um, for tonight's assignment, it will just be to recreate your um, episode pitch. And you can, I would suggest that you redraft your script. We are going to do a table read next Monday, and there's no official assignment for another draft of a script until then. If you want feedback on any material that you write, which I would recommend, um, I'm happy to give feedback. George? Yep, I'm going to write my email right is now. Is happy to get. Uh, his email is also on the syllabus. Um, we're all happy to give feedback. We will have traditional office hours today, tomorrow, Friday, so there's lots of opportunity for feedback before the table read. Um, but just so you guys know, for tonight, it's just a repitching of an idea um, for your episode. That's all the material that I had. Does anyone have any questions in the two minutes remaining? And I'm going to stick around, so if you guys want to chat with me individually, that's fine too. So, so basically, to host, you just be yourself? Yeah. The, 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 to, the mo to, the, to the most extent that you can, be yourself, yeah. And I mean, there are exceptions to every single rule. Um, I know that when I host, I'm very different than I am in real life. Not really. Really? Yeah, no, you're pretty similar. You said that I, my hosting persona was a lot different than you were expecting. I was just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for the most part, be yourself. Like, and we mean that very literally, right? Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but that time you asked that question at the very end, like, it was was how you would say it, and it was the best delivery of the voice. So, so less of like a pitch to like get people excited, but just kind of explain what you're doing? Yeah. Because um, a pitch kind of, you know, 
just right. turn it, it's kind of like excited. Well, when you think of pitch, you think of like Shark Tank, and you think of, right. I have 30 seconds to get someone to buy my buy into my idea, so I'm just going to be as loud and exaggerated yeah. as possible. <laughs> so please don't mistake pitch for that. Um, keep it under a minute and a half. Um, a lot of your videos were like five and a half minutes. That's like longer than your entire episode is going to be. Um, keep it under a minute and a half. I really, uh, not just as a challenge, but that'll really help structure the way you deliver. Um, and this should be the point of your video. So maybe don't think about it as a pitch, as it is a point, like a thesis. Think of it as explaining your video to someone else. So it's not the actual stuff you wrote. It's not the... Uh, it's like a trailer. Uh, remember Paul, right? That yeah. Remember when Paul was doing his shoebox thing? Oh, okay, it's that. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> you can just mime one. We've got a budget for a cardboard box. Yeah, we we got we got about a dollar fifty. <laughs> okay, thanks, guys. All right, we'll stick around for a while if you guys have questions.